You know what, Joan? Go ahead. Talk to Helen. See what she has to say. But there's more to this person than just your take on her. <laughs> and what is that supposed to mean? It means you do this interview your way, and I'll do it mine. Sam? Sam! God damn it! I will do it my way, and I won't be skittish about it. From Luminary Media, you're listening to the AM Archives. This is Episode 8, Think Twice, by Lauren Shippen. Hello, Helen. Dr. Bright. Hello. How are you feeling today? It's so quiet down here now. I don't... I don't like it. Thank you for your patience in all of this. I know this must be incredibly frustrating for you, seeing other Tier 5s being moved out. Where are they going? Well... Some are being released, and we're going to try and find a way to compensate them for the time that we took from them. I know we could never make it up, but... Everyone's being released? Even the man who shocked that poor woman? Ah, no. Sydney has been taken elsewhere. Somewhere we hope he can be rehabilitated. You're safe here, Helen. I know that hasn't been the case up until now, but we're doing everything we can to change that. So I can go home now? I hope so. But I need some more information first. Your file is... What? Well, it's very thin for someone who's been here as long as you have. How long is that exactly? We weren't able to dig up your original intake form, but the earliest date in your file is from over six years ago. I've been here nearly double that. Really? That's... I'm very sorry to hear that, Helen. That is... unacceptable. What else is in that file? I... I've never seen my own file before. As I said, uh, not much. That's what I wanted to talk about today, Helen. I know you've been reluctant to speak to me, and I understand that, really I do. But I'm hoping I can get you to trust me. If I talk to you, you'll let me out? I can't promise that, Helen. We are trying to change things, but there are still protocols- The protocols are wrong! I know. But if we can talk openly and honestly, you won't be kept here anymore. That I can promise. But I might be taken to wherever that awful man went. I'm sorry you had to see that, Helen. You should never have been in danger from another patient. We're always in danger here. Not anymore. Why should I trust you? Why are you any different from the others? The people who worked here before me, they were driven by fear. I'm not afraid. Even of Sydney? He could have killed you. He could have killed all of us. You weren't even a little bit scared? Well, no, I was. Uh, I was terrified. But not of what he could do. I was scared of what he was willing to do. What do you mean? The world is a scary place. I have a feeling you and I know that better than most. But it's not the ability that's worth fearing. It's the person. Are you afraid of me? 
Should I be? <laughs> Everyone else has been. Why do you think that? Look at where I am. That's what I wanted to talk about. I understand that you have the ability to manipulate frequencies. Oh, Mary. I'm sorry? You mess with a local radio station when you're 20 and that makes you a dangerous freak? Is that what happened? It's not even like I did it on purpose, it just... I wanted to hear that one song, you know... I remember when, I remember, I remember when I lost my mind. What was that called? There was something so pleasant about that craze. It was by someone with a really weird name. Gnarls Barkley. What? Uh, that was the group that sang that song. Right. Gnarls Barkley. Do you remember what that song was called? Um... Crazy, I believe. <laughs> oh, of course. How's that for irony? So, is that really what happened? You manipulated the radio waves to hear a certain song and ended up here? What, you don't think the AM would imprison someone for that? No, I believe the AM is capable of exactly something like that. I just... Well, it's extreme. In my experience, it's an extreme organization. Would you be willing to tell me a bit more about that experience? Why? There isn't much to say. I was brought here for no reason, kept against my will, and now I need to prove that I'm worthy of being released? You don't need to prove anything at all, Helen. I just want to get to know you a bit better. That's the only way I'm going to be able to help you. Do you think we could do that? Get to know each other? If there's someone else in the facility you'd prefer to talk to... No. No. Everyone I've talked to before now is... I want to trust you, Dr. Bright. But it's not... I mean, do we... Do we have to do this through the glass like this? It makes me feel like I'm some kind of animal. And I'm... I'm just so tired of feeling that way. Of course, I understand that. But there are pro protocols. I know. But you said that you're changing this place. Are you lying to me already, Dr. Bright? No, Helen, I'm not lying to you. Then let me out of here. Just for a few minutes. Just so I can talk to you without a wall between us. Okay. What? What are you doing? I'm coming in to talk to you. Well, that little recorder of yours won't work in here, N not with all the... Ah, uh, uh, right. The frequency suppression. I, uh, I, I didn't think about that. There's also kind of nowhere for you to sit, unless you want to sit on my bed. No, no, that's all right. I'll... I'm fine standing. It's nice to meet you face to face, Helen. Don't you need this for your records? I'm sorry? This room is going to put your recorder on the fritz. You won't have any record of what we talk about, and if you're so worried about files having missing information... I take good notes. Can't we just go to the observation room? It's so... It's so harsh in here, and I just want to... I, I want to sit on a couch and look at a different wall and feel like a halfway normal person having a halfway normal conversation. 
You said you weren't afraid. I, I won't do anything to you. I can't. All right. Let's go sit down. Please, take a seat. Thank you, Dr. Bright. Thank you for treating me like a person. That's not something you should have to thank me for. And Helen, I should mention that the only other door in and out of this room is locked and coded. I would understand if you wanted to try and make a break for it, but... I wouldn't get very far. I'm truly sorry for this situation. From what I can tell, there isn't a legitimate reason for you being in here. There doesn't seem to be a legitimate reason for anyone being in a place like this, even someone like Sydney. But, well, we still have to be cautious. I understand. For all you know, I'm actually a horrible murderer who is waiting for the first opportunity to kill you. I'm not even sure how that would work. Unless you're made of radio parts, I can't do anything to you. Is that how your ability works? Only on radio frequencies? What does my file say? It just says frequency kinetic. No class, no level. But what does it say about me? It says you're extremely volatile. Do I seem extremely volatile to you? No, Helen. You seem unbelievably grounded for someone who has been through what you've been through. But I still need more information. Like what? Like the extent of your abilities, what it can affect, how much control you feel over it, your own feelings about it. I don't feel anything about it. Not anymore. But you did before? I thought it was neat at first. I could change the station without touching the dials, make lights flicker sometimes. It was a party trick. It works on light frequencies as well? I don't really know. I haven't been able to do it for a really long time. After a few years here, I just stopped. You suppressed your own ability? I didn't mean to. It just happened. I see. How do you feel about that? Do you miss it? Are you relieved? I miss it. Is that okay? Of course that's okay. Your ability is a part of you. A part of me that other people hate. Those people are wrong. And I'm sorry you were ever made to feel that being atypical was a bad thing. You really think it's a good thing? I don't think it's good or bad. It just is. The person, not the ability, is what matters, right? Like you said? Exactly. Could you help me get my ability back, Dr. Bright? I don't know, Helen. It's unusual, but not unheard of, for an atypical to lose touch with their ability. Many of those people get them back, but it depends on why the ability stopped in the first place. Nothing is ever lost, but some things are harder to access. I don't know why it stopped. It just did. Well, hopefully, if we work more together, we can figure out why and help you get it back. If that's something you'd want. Of course I'd want it. Without it, it feels like a missing part of my nervous system. Like one of my arms is constantly numb or something. What did it feel like before? Whole. I felt whole. What do I have to do to get out of here, Dr. Bright? If I can't be whole, at least let me be free. My hope is that you can be both, Helen. But I have some basic questions for you first. 
You said you didn't know how you would kill me with your ability. No, that was just a joke. I, d I didn't mean no, that. No, I, I know, Helen. It's okay. I think a little gallows humor is understandable in this situation. <sighs> but I still need to ask. Have you ever used your ability to harm another living thing? No, of course not. Helen, I'm not going to judge you for what you've done in the past. I want to know who you are now. If you're not going to judge me, then why ask? <sighs> because I need to understand why you're in here. The AM has a terrible track record, yes, but placing someone with your ability of your level in Tier 5 simply because of a radio mix-up? Are you sure nothing else happened before you were brought here? Traffic lights. What? The traffic lights near my house. I didn't mean to. You have to believe me. I believe you. What happened? I was just playing around in my room one night, making the lights flicker, and I didn't realize... I didn't realize that the traffic lights outside my window were flickering, too. It was never a busy intersection, but it wasn't well lit, and people usually drove pretty fast. I grew up in West Texas, where there's not a stoplight for miles and miles, and then suddenly there is, and people don't always slow down as much as they should. And I didn't know that I was making the lights flicker outside, too. And then all of a sudden, I hear this terrible crash outside my window. Both lights were green. They weren't supposed to be, but I made them green. And a truck sped through the intersection and... It was awful. I'm very sorry to hear that, Helen. It can be very frightening when an ability is new and has unforeseen consequences. Yes, exactly. Unforeseen. I didn't mean to. I had no idea that that would happen. But I guess the AM found out because a few weeks later there are people on my doorstep saying I need to come in for an evaluation and then I'm brought here. You were, you were brought directly here? The AM has a facility near Dallas, I, I would have thought. Well, I went there first. I've been to a couple of different facilities, I think. I don't know if they start to blur together, and so much of that first year was just being moved around. I've been here, wherever here is, the longest. Do you know why you were moved? No. I don't. But please don't move me around again. Just let me out of here, Dr. Bright. I think I will be able to do that. But first, uh, it might be good to talk to some of the other facilities that you're at, see if they have any more information. What, because you think I'm lying to you? Are you lying to me, Helen? What would be the point? It's not like there's something worse you can do to me. Worse than what? Than the past decade. I've been trapped here. Experimented on. Watched other people get experimented on for I don't even know how long exactly. You seem like an okay person compared to the rest, but a lot of them seemed okay at first. They all turn eventually. What do you mean, Helen? There was a woman, like you, before. She was smart and skeptical, like you. I'm not skeptical of you, Helen. I'm just trying to get the whole picture. Tell me more about this woman. I thought she was a friend at first. She was kind to me. More than Rostova, at least. Director Rostova? Yes. 
he was in charge for as long as I could remember. And he was so cruel. I think he liked making our lives miserable. Why do you say that? He was constantly running experiments. He treated all of us like lab rats. I... He's not still here, is he? I, I know he liked to listen in, but I haven't seen him in so many years, no, and- No, Director Rostova isn't here anymore. He retired. He could still be listening. Helen, I promise you, he's not. He... He passed away a few years ago, actually. Oh. I know I should feel bad about that, but I don't. That's all right. Do you want to tell me more about your friend? What? The woman who was kind to you. Ellie. She was always assisting Rostova, but she would be patient with us. Gentle. Ellie? That's what she told us to call her. At first, and then she became Director Wadsworth, and I barely ever saw her again. You know her, don't you? Yes, I'm familiar with her. Where did she go? Does she still work here? She... She still works for the AM, yes, but not here. Oh. Well, that's a relief. <laughs> I understand that she didn't run Tier 5 particularly well. That's a bit of an understatement. After... Um, well, after she became director, she stopped being gentle with us. I don't know what she wanted from us, but the others hated her. I kept thinking I would wake up one day and she would be Ellie again, but that never happened. I'm very sorry that she betrayed you, but she can't hurt you anymore. You don't like her very much either, do you? How do you even know her? Well, uh, she was my direct predecessor. When Agent Green and I took over... Agent we... Green? He's still here? Uh, he's director now. With me. He didn't approve of what Wadsworth was doing and wanted to reform this place. He did? You know him? A little bit. Well, no, not really. He never came down here much but I knew that he was Wadsworth's right hand. Not anymore. But she still works for the AM? How is that fair? It isn't. I should have killed her when I had the chance. And I was so close. I'm sorry? Dr. Bright, this really is inconvenient. I should have suspected that she was gone when you started clearing out the cells, but, well, we don't get the weekly newsletter down here in Tier 5. Helen, are you alright? Mm. This didn't go exactly as planned, but yes, I'm fine, thank you. Helen? Having a hard time moving, Dr. Bright? What's happening? Oh, you know, just karma and irony catching up to you. You were right to be skeptical. I know I said you weren't, but you should have been. I was lying. Not about all of it. I really was brought into the AM for a completely innocent mistake, but I may have exaggerated about my lack of ability. Well, no. I just straight up lied. <laughs> but can you blame me? 
if you knew just how many things are controlled by frequency and therefore controlled by me, you never would have let us sit in the same room. Helen, what are you doing? Temporary paralysis. I thought about killing you, but, well, I kind of dig your thinly veiled disdain for dear old Wadsworth. It's nice to meet people with things in common. Helen, I'm going to need you to let me go. I can, I can help you. I don't want help, Dr. Bright. I want revenge. Tell me where Ellie is. I, I can't do that, Helen. Oh, come on. Let me finish the job I started. What year is it? 2017? Seven years ago. Goodness, it's been a long time. You mean you really... You Tried mean... to kill Wadsworth? Yes. Yes, I did. Well, technically, I did kill her for a few minutes. Security was just a little too quick with the defibrillator. Helen, I, uh, I understand that you're angry. I even understand... Wanting to hurt the people who kept you trapped here, but but if you let us help you, we can put all of that in the past. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. You really must not like her if you're willing to let that slide. What's the deal? Professional jealousy? <gasps> Lover's quarrel. God, I got so lucky having you in here. Never thought I'd meet a kindred spirit this way. It isn't luck, Helen. I, I'm trying to correct her mistakes. No, no. Luck is definitely playing a role in this. I mean, the fact that she scrubbed my file? I knew she was embarrassed by that whole heart-stopping debacle, but wow. Wasn't that just a stroke of good fortune? What would your file have said if Wadsworth hadn't purged it? I like you, Dr. Bright. You're a very quick thinker. Even when you've had the electrical impulses and your arms and legs stopped. You must be getting very uncomfortable. Yeah. Yes, I am. I, I would really appreciate it if you would let me go now. No. That's not going to happen. In a few minutes, once that clock strikes six and the place is officially on weekend staff, I'm going to lock you in here and go deal with your colleagues. I think I'll start with Agent Green. I hope I can remember what he looks like. What are you going to do to him? I don't know yet. Depends on how helpful he is. You don't have to do this, Helen. God! You don't still believe the lost little lamb act I've been putting on, do you? I think that everyone has the capacity for change if they make the choice. Well, I'm not making that choice. I'm very sorry to hear that. I think you'll regret it. Eh, I doubt it. There are plenty of things I regret in my life. The people I've killed in this organization, not one of them. People? Oh. You didn't think Wadsworth was just a moment of volatility, did you? Why do you think I got moved around so much? I see. Yes. I think you are finally starting to see. You've been planning this for a while, haven't you? Sydney. The breakout attempt, of course. Mm -hmm. A very successful dry run, I would say. I found a chink in the armor of this place. Sydney couldn't open my door. It's old school and double, triple, quadruple reinforced the bastards. But I could open his. Vibrate an unsecured lock enough and poof! Open door. He wanted to see how we reacted. And let me say, not... Well, you really need to shape up your security, Dr. Bright. I get wanting to make this place less prison-like, but baby steps. You have to be cautious with things like this. I'm realizing that now, thanks. I really do appreciate you trying. 
It's nice. Naive. But nice. Oh! Would you look at that? The little hand is on the six. The last of the regular employees should be on their way out, and security is changing its shifts, meaning I can lock this place down and move freely. Security is still very tight, Helen, especially as we've been clearing out Tier 5. You won't be able to get out of here. I don't need to get out of here, Dr. Bright. We're way past that. Helen, please. Don't bother, Dr. Bright. You can't save me. Maybe not. Maybe not. That, but, but that doesn't mean you can't be saved. The AM is different now. The people in this building are trying to be different. Better. They don't deserve to be hurt. The AM created a monster and then locked it in its basement and forgot about it. When you decided to clean out the basement, you let out the monster too. This is exactly what you all deserve. Helen! 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 No, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hello? Hello? Is anyone out there? Hello? AM Archives is brought to you by Luminary Media and is a production of Atypical Artists. The series is written by Lauren Shippen, Octavia Bray, and Caitlin Schneiderhan. This episode was written by Lauren Shippen. In it, you heard the voices of Julia Morizawa as Dr. Bright, Helen Highfield as Helen, and Lauren Shippen as Sam. This episode was directed by Lauren Shippen and sound designed by Misha Stanton. Original score by Evan Cunningham. The AM Archives is produced by Lauren Shippen, Jordan Cope, Brigham Snow, and Evan Cunningham. Thank you for listening, and stay strange. <laughs>